Hey guys, so I thought that it would be fun at some point during this pregnancy to do a pregnancy q and A. I I always get a lot of questions from you guys over on my Instagram. I have another video that I'm working on, but I'm gonna kind of switch it around a little bit. So um, I wanted to post that this week, but I think it'll be next week, but I didn't want another week to go by where I didn't post a video. <laughs> and so I thought this would be a really quick and easy fun one, and I'd get to answer some of your guys' questions. So my last video, I was really excited because I actually had comments on my video for like 12 hours. YouTube has taken my comments away. They took them away like a year ago. They've since given them back to a lot of um, YouTubers and for some reason with mine, they give them back and then take, <laughs> take them away. I get asked a lot of questions why are I, yeah, I guess I, I get asked the question a lot, why I turned off <laughs> my, uh, YouTube comments and I haven't YouTube has so anyway on to the video I went on to my Instagram and asked you guys to leave me some questions And so I just kind of like typed into my notes some of the like frequently asked questions One of the questions that I got asked um, a good amount and I've been asked this question before is uh, Do you feel like this pregnancy was harder especially in the beginning after? losing blue it's interesting because um, the loss of blue affected this pregnancy in a positive and not necessarily a negative way, but just an emotional way. So my pregnancy with blue, um, it really started off on a really stressful note. As soon as we went to the doctor, um, it was immediately, you know, we just had complications and they couldn't tell if tell us if it was a viable pregnancy for the first 12 weeks. And it was just a really intense, um, high stress pregnancy with complications. I was just like riddled with fear and I was riddled with doubt during that pregnancy. And after we lost him, like I really beat myself up for that. It was definitely one of like the bigger hurdles that I had to get through with my grief journey was like forgiving myself for that. And I promised myself that if ever we got pregnant again, that I would have more faith and that I would put it in God's hands and that I would allow myself to feel excited and allow myself to bond and that I would just take it one day at a time. And so when we did get pregnant, I really held myself to that. And so I think that because of the trials that we went through with Blue's pregnancy and because of the loss uh, that we went through, I knew more what I didn't want to do in this pregnancy and it allowed me to have more joy in this pregnancy and that really, really helped me um, through that first trimester especially. So we had found out that we were pregnant with this baby less than a year after we had lost Blue. And so we were still going through like those one, those anniversaries that you go through during the first year. One anniversary that I just knew was gonna be hard on me for whatever reason was the anniversary of when I found out that I was pregnant with Blue because that was just such a life altering day. Um, and so I found out that I was pregnant with Blue on July 9th. And then as it turns out, we found out that we were pregnant with Castle on July 9th, which on one hand is really cool, but on the other hand, it was a really already emotionally charged day. And then it also made it to where this pregnancy started where Blue's pregnancy started. And so then all of a sudden they were both on the same timeline, which was really interesting emotionally. It definitely made it to where I was more nervous when we reached that 16, 17 week mark. And I was definitely really, really, really grateful to pass that milestone. And it really did help a lot emotionally for this pregnancy to be able to carry on its own timeline and then also coming up on the one year anniversary of losing blue um, we lost him on september 30th and so just dealing with or going through the emotions of coming up 
on the one year anniversary while being pregnant with this baby. The one year anniversary was really close to when I was reaching that 16 week mark. And so I had the emotions of like being nervous to be approaching that 16, 17 week mark. And then I also had the emotions of coming up on the one year anniversary of losing blue. Um, and then that was also <laughs> right when we found out the gender. And it was definitely emotional for me finding out that we were having another boy. Like I think they all happened within the same week. Finding out that we were expecting a boy after losing our first son, I definitely had to go through um, some emotions. I It was like I had to grieve Blue in a whole new different way that I hadn't already grieved him, that I completely wasn't expecting. And here it was during this already like super emotionally charged um, week. <laughs> So it was, it was an odd experience that I think was very unique to me. But once we kind of got past that one year anniversary and once this pregnancy started to run on its own, things just got better. Um, when you lose a baby and then you're expecting a new baby, it doesn't fill that hole. There are two completely separate things, which I 100% knew going into it. Um, I didn't want to get pregnant again to fill that hole. I still grieve blue and I still like have nights where, you know, I'm laying in bed crying, like missing blue, even though we're expecting this baby. Like it doesn't take away the pain or anything like that. Hopefully some of that made sense. These next questions are gonna be quicker answers, I promise. Um, I got some questions about the nursery. We are gonna be in this rental house until he is about four or five months old. And so he's just gonna be in our room as we're getting ready for Castle. I'm trying to just keep things to a minimum. His setup in our bedroom is gonna be like a dresser with his stuff in it. We'll hang some of his clothes in our closet and then the rest of them will be in the dresser. Um, and his bassinet and his swing out here in the living room. And we're just kind of keeping it minimal. But after we move in, um, we will definitely be putting his room together. I do have nursery design ideas. Um, I'm kind of thinking like a mystical forest, not woodland creatures. Like I think that's a popular nursery theme where like little foxes and owls and stuff like that. Not that, <laughs> it's adorable, but my vision is more like a mystic forest. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what exactly that even is. Um, when is your due date? So my due date is March 25th, um, but they are inducing me about a week earlier because I have a high risk pregnancy and they want to know like exactly when to stop my medications that I, like my blood thinner medication that you don't wanna be on when you go into labor for obvious reasons. <laughs> Um, and just to make sure that like it's a controlled environment, I'm going to labor when my doctor is there um, and not when another doctor is like, on call. So um, I'm being induced March 18th, which is five weeks from today. I'm 34 weeks today, five weeks from today, we're going to the hospital. <laughs> Rolling into the next question, um, I got asked if we're gonna be doing like a baby haul or a shop with me or if we're ready for him. Um, all those kinds of questions. We are not, I mean, we are ready for him. Again, I'm taking a very min minimalist approach. We also have most of the stuff still from Harper. We still have her newborn car seat. We have her stroller. We have her bassinet. Um, we have like all of that big stuff already like the main stuff um and so i do want to get a different baby swing i want to try the mama Roo. that's what it's called right i wanted to try that with harper and i was on the fence between the two um and so i think this time <laughs> i'm just gonna go ahead and get the um the mama Roo and see how we like that one um and so that's like really the only big ticket item that we have to buy after we move in, we'll buy his like crib and 
his bedroom furniture, but we mostly have all of the main stuff. So it's really just like clothes and blankets. So I feel like we just need to do one trip to Bye Bye Baby um, and we can get the majority of the stuff. My sister-in-law is gonna watch Harper and Joe and I are gonna go on a date night and we're just gonna try to buy like 95% of everything that he needs in one fun, we're having a baby shopping spree um, where we keep things minimal. <laughs> so I am gonna be vlogging that and I'm really excited for that video. I'm really excited for that date night. Another uh, big question that I got was, what has surprised you about pregnancy and was it what you expected? Um, yes and no. Um, as far as pregnancy in general, um, I went into <laughs> pregnancy and I always thought about pregnancy as like if ever I were pregnant, like I would just be like glowing and floating on air and there'd be rainbows and butterflies and I would just be like so happy and glowing and pregnant and <laughs> like everything would just, the world would be different. Um, whereas now that I'm pregnant, like I realize that um, I am a hot mess. Most days I don't feel good. <laughs> and um, I'm still throwing up like a couple of times a week. Like there's, I threw up this morning. <laughs> so like it's a good chance there's like throw up on my shirt. Um, I wear Joe's clothes a lot. <laughs> You don't feel glowy or peaceful or like you're riding in on a unicorn <laughs> and Then it has its hard parts um, and I don't want to sound like I'm complaining at all because I still I Still cannot believe That this happened for us not only once but twice like he's literally kicking me right now I Cannot believe that I get to experience this like I am so blessed and so lucky and I don't know how this happened <laughs> um, I wish so badly that I could wrap my mind around it more like I'm literally like with my hand on my stomach right now you can't see it because he's kicking me right here you can't see it <laughs> um, and it's like even though I'm feeling him getting inside of me I'm just like I'm dreaming I have to be dreaming like I just it's so hard for me to like wrap my mind around this and so I feel like when we and Joe is the same way and so I feel like when we meet him for the first time and they lay him on my chest I am going to be in such shock like I wouldn't be surprised if I just like fainted or something because I'm just gonna be like what is happening how is this real life so I am so so beyond grateful as far as my specific pregnancy goes um, I've been surprised at the size of my stomach. The women in my family, I think because we're all short, we're all about like the same size. I feel like when the women in my family would be like six months pregnant, they looked nine months pregnant. And when they were nine months pregnant, it just looked painful. Um, and so I always thought that when I got pregnant, like at four months pregnant, I was gonna look six months pregnant. And at six months pregnant, I was gonna look nine months pregnant. And then I was just gonna be like out to here. Um, and in reality, I'm like eight months. And it, I'm definitely starting to pop more and more. But just like last week, there was this night where my stomach just like completely went away. I was trying to get like a picture of it. It's kind of like a weird angle. But like my stomach was like flat and I'm eight months pregnant. Um, so not to say that I don't have a pregnancy tummy. Since then, it's been more consistent that like I have like a, a bigger tummy. So um, I can't imagine my tummy going that flat again. So I, I'm not saying I'm small. Like I definitely have like a, a big old pregnancy tummy, but I just always thought it'd be like so much bigger. Um, and then I never expected to lose weight during my pregnancy. I didn't lose weight during my pregnancy with Blue. Um, I had gained 14 pounds in the 16 weeks that I was pregnant. Uh, with this pregnancy, I'm between 10 and 15 pounds down. It kind of like bounces. Is Harper excited and does she understand? She definitely understands this pregnancy a lot more than she understood Blue's pregnancy. I think she was just a little too young 
the last time to fully understand it. Also this time she's getting to see a lot more ultrasounds and like see my tummy get bigger. So I think she's able to understand it more, but she talks about Castle all of the time. Um, she asks about him all the time. Like when I, when it's lunch time, she'll say, oh, is Castle hungry? And then when I'm done eating, she's like, is Castle all full now? Are you going to be breastfeeding? Um, this is something that I always thought that I wouldn't necessarily be able to do if ever I did get pregnant because of my lupus and rheumatoid arthritis medication. Um, so basically, <coughs> I can either switch to medication that is okay for breastfeeding or I can try to not take the medication while I'm breastfeeding and then when I, if and when I have like a lupus flare up or an RA flare up, um, then I would have to start the medication. So it's kind of basically, we're just gonna play it by ear. Um, I'm gonna try to just not be on the medication and, and breastfeed, but for me, like it's amazing how much my medication does for me without it. I literally can't move. If I were to start to go downhill and I were to start to have flare-ups and stuff, like I would just need at that point to choose to be on my medication because I wouldn't, I might be able to breastfeed, but I wouldn't be able to physically take care of him, physically take care of Harper, physically take care of myself. Like I would just be, I mean, it really feels like I'm in bed like paralyzed because I just can't move without a ton of pain. So I'm hoping my arthritis has been really amazing during my pregnancy. Um, a lot of times lupus and arthritis goes in remission during pregnancy and that has been the case for me. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, for some women it continues, you know, a little after pregnancy and then other women like my mom, um, immediately after pregnancy, you start to get the flare ups and stuff. So we're just going to kind of play it by ear and, uh, see how it goes. I will definitely be breastfeeding until I can't be breastfeeding. It's, I'm excited to give that a go. <laughs> it's something I never thought that I would be able to do. Um, are you having a C-section? Are you planning on having a natural birth? What are my birth plans? Like that kind of stuff. Um, I'm hoping to not have a C-section. I'm hoping to do it vaginally. Other than that, I'm kind of winging it. <laughs> which I think basically, if you're winging it, going into it, you're getting an epidural. <laughs> it's not like if you do it naturally, that's a whole, whole like mindset that you need to get into like months prior. I'm being induced and uh, I definitely want to feel contractions. I want to know what that's about. I, I don't know why, but I'm also really curious to know how similar it is to when we, um, had blue because I was basically in labor for 36 hours and I didn't know it. Um, and so I'm curious to see like how much worse it gets past the point that I was when I had him. Cause when I had him, I feel like I was like 10 out of 10 pain when I would have a contraction, which I didn't know that that's what it was. And neither did the doctors. Um, I couldn't talk. I couldn't stand. I couldn't breathe. I could think like I would just like bear down and bear it. I'm curious to like get past that point for some reason on my own. I don't know why. I don't know that I actually will. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about feeling the same feelings and having like a little bit of PTSD um, once I start going through the contractions and just feeling the same feelings and sensations and like pain level that I felt with blue. Like I could very much see how that would be hard mentally and how it would be hard to not go back into that mental space and go back to that night that we lost him. Um, and I definitely don't want to be going through that when I'm trying to have a baby. So if that kind of, if I start having a hard time emotionally, then I would just quickly just get the epidural so that, you know, we can just, you know, I definitely want to enjoy that, that experience that I never thought that I would have. Have you guys looked into any more uh, baby names that you like? So we are naming him Castle. Um, I have, we've been trying to find a middle name that goes with Castle. And so in doing that, 
I have read hundreds if not thousands of boy names and it's kind of like always in the back of my mind like you know oh maybe we'll stumble or stumble across one that we actually like more than castle and that has not happened we can't even find a middle name um so it might just be castle paradise which i feel like castle paradise is like strong enough on its own um we do have one other name that has meaning to us if so i'll announce that when the time comes um but other than that like out of all of the names that i have gone through not one of them do i like anywhere near as much as i like castle there is just something about the name castle that just feels so right <laughs> and i just love it so much for him so castle is 100 percent his name and the last question <laughs> is uh do you guys want more kids it's funny because we always said that we wanted two or three kids and we were more just leaning towards two kids um and then during this pregnancy i have really switched to wanting three kids technically speaking about the fourth baby since there's um harper blue castle and then the next baby would be the fourth um having baby fever for that baby while i'm pregnant with castle but that has been the case i don't know why i just like have been really excited to have another one and to complete our family and i feel like i would want to do it soon after obviously we're gonna like give it a minute because we could have castle and be like nope <laughs> we're done this is harder than we thought or i'm more tired than we thought or whatever the case may be um so if that happens then of course you know we would just stick with harper blue and castle i love those names together but um it has been interesting being so excited for another baby so i'm hoping that that happens and if everything is looking good for it i am wanting that to be sooner rather than later i don't know if we would get pregnant again or if we would do adoption again i really have an equal love for both of them and for both journeys and i can see um the positives of both of them and so it's just something that you know we'll just kind of have to um wait and see which way we feel guided so i hope that you guys enjoyed that video it is getting close um, my next video i think is going to be like a maternity shop with me haul um and also a little snippet of our maternity photo shoot so that will be exciting. Um, and then the next video after that will probably be our big come baby shopping with us. So uh, we are in the final countdown. <laughs> like we really need to start getting ready. And so I will be taking you guys on that journey with us. And I'm excited. So I will end with a bump shot because I hope that's what you do when you're pregnant. Move the camera back down. This is a maternity shirt that I bought. And it's been interesting like being pregnant during the winter because all of my shirts have been like baggy and they've been sweaters and so this is like literally the first like more form-fitting top that i've worn like in my pregnancy yeah that's my 34 week today pregnancy belly um he i am definitely carrying very high up like this is my this is my belly button right here and this is my lower abdomen. I feel like a lot of women carry from like here, but I am just all up here and he is like kicking my ribs all the time, but he is head down still. So um, I don't know what all this is. <laughs> I guess it's, it's his butt and his legs or something. I don't know, but there he is. So anywho, bye, thanks for watching. <laughs> Awkward ending. <laughs>